This is the ultimate power supply for the lab, a project that was like climbing on a mountain. It features multiple supplies in one single box, actually a real mess, but with a retro look. It's a nice hike. They're having Python it and made it to scale, and my thought was, would I actually manage to fit it all inside? I just slipped on the ice. Does it make any sense doing it yourself? It's not only a matter of money, sometimes you have no options, sometimes it's for learning or challenging yourself, or just for the journey, like going for a hike. This nice hike. So I choose for the quote unquote easy way, doing it myself, starting from scratch. As a first step, I picked some piece of metal scraps to build the cabinet. A solid enclosure out of thick steel, so if a bomb is dropped, this will be fine. And just like when you go hiking and might need the map, I printed one out and stuck it on the side of the enclosure to show where the apertures need to be made. Doing metal working usually is a job that goes without hassles, but <laughs> invariably something goes wrong in every project. Isn't your experience too? If so, feel free to drop a comment in the section down below. After having cut this piece of aluminum sheet, a couple of squares are made. This will make it easier to bend the sheet. And this other one will become the front panel of the enclosure. So with the homemade metal brake, I tried to bend the sheet to create two lips. It didn't went well. So with a little creativity with the vise, another round on the metal brake, and some friendly hammer persuasion, I managed to get it straight. After having Python it and made it to scale, the whole thing looks not that bad eventually. I'll put together a full video on how to make a professional looking front panel, but in the meantime, here's a little sneak peek. I designed and built the two control boards out of modified PCB and the back converter and the multiple outputs at selectable voltages circuit that you are seeing here. I'll be making a full video about the circuit that will be up next week. I have a problem with this high power back converter that I'm testing because uh, oh, increasing the control voltage uh, to the uh, output voltage uh, at a given point uh, I have a surge, uh, a peak of current and output uh, that uh, makes the protection, the short circuit protection to intervene and uh, stopping the MOSFET a few times before uh, I stop, uh, I shut down everything. This buck converter has been a source of a headache for a while. Eventually I found that adding a ferrite choke solved the problem. I also programmed this display and a multi-channel of a sampled ADC with logic inputs and outputs to read the switch status and to control external relays. These displays provide information about the voltage, the set current and the extra current uh, that uh, the power supply provides. So it's time to put all the parts together, starting from the front panel. I don't know you, but I love this retro style. However, since this panel is pretty crowded, this made me soon realize that I'd be stuffing a lot into this enclosure. And my thought was, would I actually manage to fit it all inside? It is a challenge, it's a long, it's a long journey. And uh, it's like that when you do a project that becomes uh, quite complex. It becomes like a long hike. 
Next up, I need to make the brackets that will hold the boards and their chunky head sinks in place. And uh, as you will see later, the capacitors will be secured using bits of plastic pipe glued right onto the enclosure floor. And there's no much to comment here, so I'm gonna let you enjoy the images that, thanks to the magic of video editing, in a few minutes shows what in reality was a long process of assembly delicate components. Alright, here we go. Time to place each part inside the enclosure and secure it. We are almost done, right? In reality, it was a long job with plenty of setbacks. Like when I had to enlarge one of the apertures because I'd accidentally made it too narrow. A real pain in the alpha particle. Anyway, let's keep working. After wiring up and testing this supply module, I'll install it inside the box. Turns out uh, it should have been placed inside before securing those ray transformers. But at this point, I'd have done anything to avoid redoing the work. And this uh, kind of snot is silicon grease that is being well distributed between the surfaces. Oh. I almost forgot, there's one more step, hooking up the wires to the front panel. This time we should be almost done, right? Though it's a job that takes patience and attention, you don't want to mess up the connections. And guess what? I mixed up the wires for these switches. Pretty soon the back of the panel turns into a jungle of wires and in modern equipment, a large printed circuit board would be used. It neatly routes all the connections with traces. But for one off piece, this is the only way to do it. Here you see the chunks of plastic pipe meant to hold the capacitors. There's really not much space inside this box and inserting the parts is challenging. It is like this. You walk for a long hike and then you feel tired and it seems that 
it takes long to, to reach the end of the hike it's becoming uh, dark just no longer the sun on the sky super cool and here a bird view of what's inside the switching unit is gonna be inserted now again the plastic pipes uh, house the capacitors last step time to hook up the front panel and tidy up the wire harnesses inside the enclosure we should really almost done right okay we are done Except we aren't. The beep lit do not enter. Oh, I just slipped on the ice. B My knees now hurt. I am about uh, at uh, five kilometers. Uh, from the chalet. I don't know what you can see, it's uh, pitch dark, but uh, I'm almost there. I'm happy to reach this safe harbor. <laughs> 